many political leaders, including Gordon Brown, are arguing for a massive expansion of nuclear power. They want many more nuclear power reactors to generate electricity, and they say they want this for a number of reasons. Firstly, for, to, to counter global warming, because they argue that nuclear power reactors put less greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. I think that's debatable, but that's what they say. Also, they want security in their energy supplies. They say this is absolute necessity for national security, that we have secure energy supplies. And if we have our nu nuclear power reactors, then that's more secure than the energy sources we have at the moment. They always, of course, com uh, combine this with improvements in energy conservation and energy efficiency and all that. But they are in interested in many more nuclear power reactors, what we call a nuclear renaissance. The problem with the nuclear renaissance is that it will inevitably lead to a massive production of plutonium because there's a great shortage of uranium which is high enough quality to be economical as a fuel for nuclear power reactors. There's a great shortage of that and therefore they will be forced to go to, over to plutonium for, as nuclear fuel. It's an alternative to uranium. And that means that there will be a large amount of plutonium spread around the world. And that plutonium can be used for very effective nuclear weapons. So many countries, according to the International Atomic Energy Agency, within 40 years, 40 countries, additional ones, will have access to the fissile material that they could use for nuclear weapons. People that argue in favour of the nuclear renaissance, um, there are environmentalists that do, and James Lovelock, for example, is very firmly in the, of, of the view that the only way of saving the planet is to maximise the use of nuclear power, because he says that global warming is so dangerous and so uh, f fatal that we should try and do all we can to avoid it, to minimise it. So he's very, he says it's a, a catastrophe, and of course he's right. I mean, if the planet warms to 4 degrees centigrade, an increase in temperature of 4 degrees centigrade, which the experts are now forecasting, then that will produce the catastrophic results that people like Lovelock predict. Where we would disagree, however, is whether nuclear power can solve the problem. I personally don't think it can. And there is a shortage of uranium. The, the high quality uranium is in short supply. Not enough to fuel a large increase in the number of nuclear power reactors. And this will force the nuclear industry and society to go for plutonium because of the, the, the uranium won't be there. And plutonium is an alternative fuel. I mean, one of the problems is that plutonium is a very efficient explosive. You know, a, 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 with high quality plutonium, a sphere the size of a, a, a large uh, of a golf ball or, or a, a tennis ball will produce an explosion equivalent to uh, several tens of thousands of tons of TNT. M massively efficient. And we're talking of a world in which there will be literally a million or more uh, nuclear weapons equivalent and in, in, in the amount of plutonium around will be, will be enough to produce more than a million nuclear weapons and to suggest, as some people do, that this can be safely kept and securely uh, is, I think, nonsense. Yeah, the nuclear industry is very keen, obviously, on a nuclear renaissance, on promoting the use of nuclear power reactors, but for, for many reasons there's quite a lot of money in it. A nuclear power reactor <coughs> uh, costs we're talking billions of dollars. That means profit and trade and all the rest of it. So it really is, from the industry point of view, financial. On the other hand, of course, the same thing is true for other types of energy production. Even renewables requires a massive investment in research and development. For example, 
So none of this would really take off unless governments were prepared to invest some money. And of course they do that because they regard it as a, a feature, a factor in national security. Our national security requires it, they say, and of course they're right. You know, you can't imagine a nation operating with ineffective energy sources. So there has to be some government um, encouragement. The, the question you have to ask is, are they encouraging the right direction? Is it better to uh, invest in nuclear power than in, say, wind energy? But of course, the, the other aspect of the, uh, of the investment is that governments regard it necessary to invest in civil nuclear power in order to have nuclear weapons. This is certainly true in Britain, for example. A Trident program of ours, which the uh, <coughs> government are so keen on, requires the infrastructure that the civil nuclear industry provides. So there's this link. Well, I mean, the technologies are the same. There's also the link industrially. You have to have a uh, significant uh, civil nuclear base in order to operate a significant nuclear weapon program. That's obviously true. So it's a, there's an inevitability about this. If the nuclear industry and the political leaders get their way and there will be a, a, a large increase in the number of nuclear power reactors, and I think they will, then we're bound to go into the fast breeder reactor generation with, I think, terrible consequences. So many more nuclear weapon powers and therefore more nuclear wars, and certainly a very significant risk of nuclear terrorism. I think this will be a very dangerous world. It's a world of nuclear anarchy, as, as people call it. Uh, I think that's a frightening prospect.